And if you recall the problems with the original Langevin equation were that uh, it was inconsistent with stationarity of the output process and moreover the white noise assumption probably led to this inconsistency. We have to check this out and uh, we also found that the power spectrum did not go to 0 fast enough and you ended up with the fact that physical quantities like mean square accelerations were infinite. So we also had some issues with causality which were rather subtle. We made this assumption that the velocity is not correlated to the noise at later times but what happens at equal times? We are not, we are rather vague about this. So we need to fix all these problems and for that we imposed, uh, we introduced this uh, generalized Langevin equation and what I am going to show today is that it solves these problems. It is completely consistent, it is a consistent way of uh, describing the velocity of a Brownian particle in terms of some memory or frequency dependent friction and uh, it also provides answers, correct consistent answers to this problem with stationarity, with causality and so on and so forth. Let us see now systematically how this goes. Okay. So the generalized Langevin equation and we looked at it in the case of uh, a single velocity component of a Brownian particle. This equation said m v dot of t plus m times an integral from minus infinity to t dt prime some memory kernel t minus t prime v of t prime was equal to the noise on the right hand side whatever that was and right now I am just going to say it is a, no, it's a noise and that is it. We are not going to specify anything about it except to say it is a stationary noise. So sum eta of t, stationary noise with the average value equal to 0, that is it, that is the only assumption. We have to see in a consistent way what kind of statistics are tenable for this noise. Then if we took averages, we computed the mobility of the particle. So we said that the average value of the velocity per unit applied force, when I apply an external force, this thing becomes plus F external of T. So this is the generalized Langevin equation and we said that the average velocity to first order in the external force. In this case, it is a linear equation, so it is actually an exact relation. This quantity divided by F external for constant external force, the limit in which T tends to infinity, this quantity tends to what was called the mobility of the particle, the static mobility of the particle at zero frequency. The dynamic mobility is the steady state response that you get when the force is sinusoidal with some fixed frequency, some given frequency omega. So in that case, we discovered that V tilde of omega average, namely the Fourier component of the velocity at that frequency at which you are pushing this system divided by per unit force, so this was F tilde of omega, that is the component of the external force corresponding to frequency omega. This quantity here was equal to the dynamic mobility. And we had in our model, we computed this quantity simply by taking Fourier transforms on both sides. There are some niceties about taking Fourier transforms of a random function. I blurred, I slurred over those uh, niceties, but one can make this rigorous. The result is perfectly correct. And this turns out to be 1 over m times, if you recall, gamma bar of omega minus i omega, but this is the one-sided Fourier transform of the memory kernel which is defined for non-negative values of its argument. 
So that is the place to which we had got a gamma bar of omega is equal to an integral from 0 to infinity dt into the i omega t gamma of t. Okay. The assumption is the memory kernel is such that dies, dies down as t tends to infinity in such a way that this in, integral converges. If it does not, then you have to take Laplace transforms and then analytically continue to minus i omega or something like that in the Laplace transform variable. So this is the uh, place we had up to which we had come. Now the question is, in linear response theory, we know we have a formula for the mobility. We are applying a perturbation which essentially couples via the variable x and we are measuring the average velocity v. So in the formalism of linear response theory, this quantity a is x and the quantity b is v, the velocity. So we should have compatibility with a formula which we get from linear response theory and the question is, is that consistent with this model or not? So we need to make sure that the model correctly reproduces that expression, the general formula. Then we can assert that these two are consistent with each other. So I want to emphasize again that the general formula we have for the mobility from linear response theory is that mu of omega, so from linear response theory, mu of omega is just the same as chi of xv of omega and we are looking at a classical particle. So this quantity is equal to the Fourier transform, this is equal to integral 0 to infinity dt e to the i omega t phi xv of t. So it is a generalized susceptibility and the question is what is phi xv of t equal to and this is classical. If you recall it is equal to beta times the expectation value, the equilibrium expectation value of A dot with B. So this is X dot of 0 with V of T in equilibrium. Okay. But of course this is V of 0. So linear response theory says on general grounds that this fellow had better be equal to 1 over k Boltzmann t integral from 0 to infinity dt e to the i omega t v of 0 v of t but v is supposed to be a stationary random variable in thermal equilibrium. So this will be some v of t naught v of t naught plus t in equilibrium t naught is arbitrary completely because if v is a stationary random variable then this correlation function is a function only of the time difference of the two arguments and it is just a function of t. Okay. So this much the general linear response theory says independent of any Langevin model okay, that is what we found in general in the classical case. Now the question is is the generalized Langevin equation compatible with this or not? Can we derive this or not? So what we have to show is the expression you get for the mobility here in the generalized Langevin equation. So this is this is equal to 1 over m gamma bar of omega minus i omega and the question is is this equal to this quantity here in the same model? If it is then I assert that these two are compatible with each other. Okay. So you see the logic in the generalized Langevin equation model we explicitly found the mobility which is computing the response straight away and we discovered by taking Fourier transforms or whatever we discovered that it is equal to this. On the other hand, general linear response theory says it should be equal to that. So we need to go back to the Langevin equation, compute this quantity and see if its integral from 0 to infinity multiplied by this gives you this. 
and if it does we are done. Okay. So, let us see if this is true. Now, the way to do this is as follows. First of all, the V must turn out to be a stationary process and we must be able to show that quite rigorously and we will see that it consistently turns out to be 1. Okay. So, let us start since I am anticipating myself since it will turn out that this V is a stationary process namely this correlator is only a function of T. Let us start, well, let us take a shortcut, let us start with the Langevin equation at time T naught plus T whatever be T naught. Okay. So, I have m v dot of t naught plus t plus m integral from minus infinity to t naught plus t and let us break that up into two pieces for a reason which will become clear. Let us break it up into a t naught t naught plus t dt prime gamma of t naught plus t minus t prime v of t prime equal to on the right hand side the noise at time t naught plus t because that is the instant at which I am writing my equation down minus the piece that I took away from here. So, it is minus m integral minus infinity up to t naught dt prime gamma of t naught plus t minus t prime v of t prime. Okay. So, I have split the force in the, the frictional force into two pieces. One depends on the velocity history after my initial time t naught whatever it is and the other is past history from way back when whenever. Okay. And let us give this a name. So, let us call this thing by definition some h it is a kind of noise because this is a random variable, this is a random variable which is imposed from outside. So, let us call it some h and what is it a function of? It has got to be a function of t naught as well as t separately. So, since t naught plus t appears here and t naught appears here separately, let us write it out in that form. Let me call it t naught plus t, t naught. It is a function of both and I define this h in this fashion here. Now, there is a reason why I did this because you see I want the velocity autocorrelation, I want the velocity to be a stationary process. right? So, in particular I want the correlator V of T naught, V of T naught plus T equilibrium average to be independent of T naught. So, in particular if I take dot, pro, if I take derivatives on both sides V of T naught, V dot of T naught must be 0 at the same instant. So, if I left multiply by V of T naught here, I get M V of T naught V dot of T naught plus T and let us left multiply on both sides and take full averages. There is no external force, so everything is in equilibrium and let us multiply this by e to the power i omega t and integrate from 0 to infinity with respect to t. Okay. I have to do the same thing everywhere, but the reason for my splitting it up till t naught is that if I set t equal to 0, this integral vanishes out here and then I am guaranteed that v of t naught, v dot of t naught is actually 0 provided V of T naught is not correlated with this provided. So, let us impose that, impose causality by the condition V of T naught, H of T naught plus T naught equilibrium equal to 0 for all T greater than 0. Impose it, I am going to impose it from outside. Naively you would have said V of T naught with eta of T naught plus T 
it should be 0. That is causality. It says the force at a later time cannot affect the velocity at an earlier time. Right? But that is not consistent. That is the important thing. It turns out it is not consistent and you will see why. On the other hand, we do not know if this condition is going to work, but it has one merit. If I do that, then straight away if I multiply by V of T naught here and set T equal to 0, then this integral vanishes. This becomes V of T naught with V dot of T naught and that is equal to 0. Construct automatically. So, stationarity is imposed, is automatically satisfied provided I can get away with this condition. Okay. At the moment, it is an artifact. We have to see what its consequences are. Okay. Is this clear? The reason why I am doing this? You could have split it anywhere. You could have from its minus infinity up to this point, you could have split the integral anywhere. But I can only split it at one point in order to maintain the fact that I want this. I require by stationarity. It is required and this condition, this imposition is going to achieve that once I break the integral up at T naught. Oh, by the way, I should say right from the beginning in this equation itself T is positive, T is positive. So, when I say T naught plus T, I mean an instant later than T naught always. T greater than equal to 0. I can take the limit T going to 0, but from above always. Yeah. So, the first term in the right hand side, uh, uh, if we take the correlation with Vt0 mm -hmm. and the second term is related because yes. Because yes. So, the second term contains the whole memory. Yes. And the first term seems like the instantaneous thing because it is uh, Yes. So how, how we will see. We will see. So, it looks like we. Uh, the noise and the velocity are mixed up in some complicated way. We will see, we will see what happens, we will see it should not, <laughs> it should not contain any memory, okay. We will see what happens as we go along. But right now the motivation as to why I am doing this is very simple. I want that stationarity and that is achieved automatically if this integral runs from T naught to T naught plus T because if I set T equal to 0, this integral vanishes, okay. But it looks like I am paying a stiff price for it because I am going to impose this which as he rightly points out means that if I multiply, if I take this term multiply by V of T naught and multiply by V of T naught here and take averages, these two are related to each other, okay. We will see. So meanwhile, let us see what happens here. If I take this average here by construction this condition has been imposed. So, left multiplying by V of T naught, taking averages and integrating with respect to T with this weight factor says this term plus M times integral from 0 to infinity dT integral T naught to T naught plus T dT prime gamma of T naught plus T minus T prime. This is a lot of algebra, but it is worth looking at it carefully to see what happens. So, you have V of T naught, V of T prime, average equilibrium multiplied by E to the I omega T and that must be equal to 0 because by construction V of T naught multiplying by h of t naught plus t average is 0 by assumption. So, this term plus that term must be equal to 0, okay. Well, let us do this integral. By the way, this equal to 0 means m is removed. It is gone and this plus that is 0. Okay. Now, what does this give us? Well, there is a d over dt here because this dot I can take to act on t it's a derivative with respect to t and so I do integration by parts, right. And the first term gives me V of t naught 
V of T naught plus T average equilibrium times e to the i omega t at t equal to 0 and t equal to infinity. That is the first term and then minus since it is integration by parts the derivative with respect to t of this guy which is minus i omega times that. So, minus i omega integral 0 to infinity dt e to the i omega t v of t naught v of t naught plus t equilibrium. So, that is this portion gone plus this double integral and I now need to simplify this double integral. So, let me erase the board here. Let me do it up here. And I will just retain this term, this integral and see what it does. Okay. First step, of course, the obvious thing to do is to change variables from t prime to t prime minus t naught clearly that is a sensible thing to do because this thing here will then become 0 out here. So, let us put t 1 equal to t naught t t 1 is t prime minus t naught is that ok several ways of doing this t prime is all right let us see where it gets us. So, this integral becomes integral 0 to infinity dt integral from where to where 0 and then t prime is t naught plus t. So, it is t 0 to t and then is the d t prime is d t 1 both plus signs gamma of what uh, t t minus t 1 that is this portion and then v of 0 v of t prime t prime is t 1 plus t 1 ah oh, sorry t naught plus t 1 equilibrium e to the i omega t that still remains as it is that is the integral I need to somehow get this integral e to the i omega t to act here somehow right. So, the thing to do is to interchange orders of integration okay. and what does this become if I interchange order of integration 0 to infinity t and for each value of t, t 1 goes up to t. So, if I interchange right now t 1 is less than t, so t is greater than t 1. So, this will become integral 0 to infinity d t 1 integral t 1 to infinity d t. Gamma of t minus t 1, v of t naught, v of t naught plus t 1 equilibrium e to the i omega t. This side. Now, let us put t minus t 1 equal to tau because that is the obvious thing to do out here, right. So, can we get rid of this? Uh, the first two terms gave us this, so we must keep this. Let us keep the last part of it. Just this integral is being simplified and let us put t minus 
E1 equal to tau. So dt equal to d tau for a fixed E1. So this is equal to integral 0 to infinity dt1 integral 0 to infinity again d tau gamma of tau. So you see finally you ended up with the memory kernel an in integral and then this remains as it is b of t naught b of t naught plus t1 equilibrium and then e to the i omega t is t1 plus tau. So there is a e to the i omega t1, e to the i omega tau. Right. So let us bring the e to the i omega tau here and this integral was just e to the i omega t1. Let me bring that there and then this completely factors integral 0 to infinity d tau e to the i omega tau gamma of tau it totally factors out hmm? and what did we call this we call this gamma bar of omega the one sided Fourier transform of this uh, the weighted with e to the i omega tau this integral was gamma bar of omega it is a function of omega alone right. So this becomes gamma bar of omega and there is already a minus i omega times the same integral dt1 e to the i omega t1 v of t0 v of t0 plus t1 this v of t0 v of t0 plus t e to the i omega t instead of t1 the integration variable is t but it is the same integral. So it says this so it says this times gamma bar of omega minus i omega of this integral times this integral with a plus sign is equal to 0. But what is this integral? This, this term here if you put in t equal to infinity this becomes v of t naught v of infinity that of course uncor decorrelates you are in equilibrium this uh, t going to infinity this becomes a product of averages and the average velocity is 0. So the upper limit is 0 hmm? this therefore goes away minus whatever happens at the lower limit and that is equal to 0 right. At the lower limit e to the i omega t is 1 as t is 0 this becomes v of t naught because t is 0 therefore you get a square v squared of t naught in equilibrium and there was a minus sign. So I move it to the other side and this is equal to that. So this fellow divided by gamma bar of omega minus i omega. here is equal to this integral. But v squared in equilibrium is kt over m that is the Maxwellian distribution. So this is k Boltzmann t over m now let us retain the m here and I put 1 here and remove the kt to this side 1 over k Boltzmann. but this is what we call mu of omega. Okay. So we have actually established directly from the Langevin equation that the mobility on the one hand is given by this. On the other hand it is the same equation says it is also equal to this integral weighted uh, this correlation function weighted with e to the i omega t integrated from 0 to infinity which is with a 1 over kt which is exactly the linear response theory formula okay. So the model is consistent with linear response theory. This is sometimes called the first fluctuation dissipation theorem. It is different from the equation 
capital gamma is too little m, little gamma m k t that we got that is the second fluctuation dissipation theorem we will come back to that we will come to that. So, this is just a in that sense the formula for the generalized susceptibility in terms of the correlation function from of which comes inside the response function is in fact the first fluctuation dissipation theorem. So, this is one way of saying it is to say that chi a b of omega equal to integral 0 to infinity d t e to the i omega t phi a b, but remember that phi a b in general was equal to beta times a dot of 0 semicolon b of tau of t in equilibrium. This is sometimes called the first in a sense it is just a definition, but it is more than that. It says the actual response function is given by this equilibrium expectation value okay. and that is a consequence of all the dynamics that we went through both classically and quantum mechanically. Recall what this fellow was, it was just a product of these two operate these two quantities in the classical case. In the quantum case it stood for integral 1 over beta d lambda etcetera etcetera that is the exact formula, but whatever it is it is some correlation function and this is completely consistent with that. Okay. So, the assumption we made that V of T naught is correlated uncorrelated with H of T naught plus T comma T naught that has led to stationarity being recovered being maintained and the fact that the first fluctuation dissipation theorem which comes out of linear response theory is satisfied. What we need to do now is to go back and say alright we made this assumption about uh, V and H some correlator was equal to 0 what happens to that what does that lead to. So, let us see where it gets us and it will lead to a, a little bit of a surprise not too surprising it will turn out that it is no longer consistent to make eta of T white noise it will not be delta correlated noise at all, but it has some finite correlation time and we will see what happens. So, let us go back and examine the consequence of saying that V of T naught H of T naught plus T T naught equilibrium is equal to 0 implies that V of T naught eta of t naught plus t equilibrium. This is the first term in this h hmm? and then there was a minus something. So, we are saying this is equal to 0. So, that is equal to m times an integral from minus infinity up to time t naught d t prime gamma of t naught plus t minus t prime V of T prime, V of T naught equilibrium. So, making this assumption is equivalent to saying this. Now, what is the first thing we can do here? It is clear that you can immediately change variables here so that I get rid of this T naught here. So, let us do that. Let us put uh, T1. equal to T naught minus T prime. Okay. So, this implies that this quantity here is equal to m times integral okay. so or T prime equal to T naught minus T. So, if T prime is T naught T 1 is 0 and if T prime is minus infinity T 1 is infinity and then there is a minus sign in the Jacobian right. So, this is 0 to infinity 
dt1 gamma of t naught uh, t minus t prime minus t naught what do we get gamma of t naught plus t minus t prime so it's minus t naught plus t1 so it's t plus t1 gamma of t plus t1 right here correlation v of t prime but t prime is t naught minus t1 v of t naught we can simplify this a little bit okay because we know this is stationary this process is stationary we have explicitly checked it out now so i can shift time arguments in this what should i do add t1 to both sides right so this is equal to therefore v of t naught for whatever t naught you like eta of t naught plus t for positive values of t or non negative we can take the limit as t goes to 0 from above equilibrium must be equal to m times an integral from 0 to infinity dt1 gamma of t1 plus t times correlation v of t naught v of t naught plus t naught we could choose t naught to be 0 it does not matter okay. just as this is independent of t naught 2 so you can put t naught equal to 0 and then you get v of 0 v of t 1 that is the correlator gamma of t 1 plus t integrated over t 1 must be equal to this thing here in particular in particular we can answer so it says for consistency you have no choice but to say that this v is indeed correlated with the noise via this formula so this is true for all t greater than 0 okay and the coupling is happening because of the memory kernel here so if you let uh, t go to 0 from above so let t 0 from above then it says that v of t naught at any time eta of t naught namely the velocity at any time the output process at any time multiplied by the input noise at the same time and you take the average value this quantity is not 0 that there is a correlation between the two which is precisely given by the integral of the memory kernel. So this is m times an integral from 0 to infinity dt1 gamma of t1 and then velocity here is v of t0 t0 plus t1 so you could as well write it as v of 0 v of t1 in equilibrium and you can in fact remove this integration variable call it t yeah why, why do we expect the velocity at present time to be correlated with uh, random force at future it has to be so so it says this random force is not all that random you specify whatever random force you like stationary stationary random force whatever you like then the only consistent way to describe the motion of this particle is to say that there is this correlation otherwise you violate the stationarity principle huh? so this at instants equal instance of time there is a correlation okay so this maintains causality that is the whole point this is the way causality is imposed in this model for consistency isn't this kind of saying that the separation we did between gamma and eta is artificial like yes exactly so it's intricately linked look what what is it you're doing it's not any <laughs> random force it's the random force on this particle okay so there is a characteristic of the particle that has come in okay and um, 
It's not surprising. It's not surprising at all for the following reason. Go back to the original Langevin equation. I haven't yet come to the first, uh, second uh, fluctuation dissipation theorem, which I will in a second. But it's not surprising because after all, when you say mm. mb dot, so this was the original Langevin equation. Say mb dot plus m gamma v equal to a tau of t, which was white noise. Hmm? We wrote this as uh, square root of gamma times zeta of t, where this was unit uh, delta unit correlation, uh, delta function as the correlation. Then one would think, look, this is completely arbitrarily specified. This is a property of the medium, but the two are related. You know that they are not independent of each other. You know gamma must be equal to 2m gamma k Boltzmann t. Okay. And we also discovered that even though you started by saying when we took averages that v was uncorrelated with eta at the same instant of time, after you computed things, you discovered that was not really true, that v of t naught eta of t naught was not 0 identically. But okay. even this is a coupling right between gamma and uh, gamma. Exactly. So there is a coupling back here. So this is a consistency condition. There is a reaction on the medium. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But that um, that is because this one is also sitting here all the way up. So this is the only way in which you can have this uh, consistency. It's a backward correlation because this <laughs> t is increasing out here. No. No, it looks counterintuitive, but it's not. It's completely consistent. Okay. So this separation we had in our minds that this uh, random force is, I said that very uh, glibly that this random force is due to molecules that won't get affected by the motion of this particle and so on, but it is affected. It is. It's the random force on this particle and it's got to be self-consistently determined, okay. You will see this more dramatically in a second. So there is a coupling, there is indeed a coupling, but we are trying to make this coupling consistent with causality, stationarity and so on, okay. So this is, uh, this is a relation which says that uh, the velocity and the force and so-called random force at the same instant of time are not uncorrelated with each other. The equal time correlation is some integral. This is a number by the way, this is a pure number out here because it has got no dependence on anything, it is a pure number and it is, that is, that is the value of this guy. In a sense, it is measuring the strength of this. But now let us see it in a more dramatic way. Huh? You could do the following now. You could say, all right, let us start with, let us turn this around and start with So let us keep that aside. So we know that there is a correlation between the V and eta. We keep that in mind. And now let us turn this around and say what was the definition of this H of uh, H of T naught plus T, T naught was equal to eta of uh, T naught plus T minus M an integral from minus infinity up to time t naught dt prime gamma of uh, t naught plus t minus t prime v of t prime. Okay, that was my definition here. Okay. Now let us multiply this by h of t naught with t naught. Just as I pre multiplied by V of T naught, I multiplied with H of T naught. When I found the velocity autocorrelation, I took V of T naught plus T or V dot for that matter from the Langevin equation, pre multiplied by V of T naught and took averages. Now I want to find the correlation of the noise with itself. So I have H of T naught plus T and H of T naught here. I multiply on this side. That is equal to this term here 
but out here for this term, this fellow here, I can substitute from the Langevin equation. I have done so for this quantity, so it must be multiplied by h of t naught, t naught on this side. But what is this fellow, this guy here? I go back to the Langevin equation and it is equal to m times v of t naught, v dot. Min, uh, plus m times an integral from t naught to what? T naught. T naught. That portion went away, right? So it's m times v naught dot. Uh, m times v of t naught. I play the same trick as before. I take this, so I take averages like that over this whole thing, substituting this for that in here, multiply by e to the i omega t and integrate over t from 0 to infinity. But all the quantities on the right hand side I do the same manipulations as before, integrate by parts, use this relation between V and eta because that is going to be important right? and simplify. This is a slightly messier calculation than the previous one. There are going to be terms proportional to m squared etc. So simplify the whole thing. Use the fact that we already know what mu of omega is. We know the integral over the velocity correlation is mu of omega, right? And that is 1 over gamma bar of omega minus i omega with an m. So use that and finally after simplification after which I am going to leave to you, you get the following result. you get m times gamma bar of omega equal to 1 over k Boltzmann t integral 0 to infinity dt h of t naught t naught e to, e to the i omega t. That looks like a fluctuation, is, it looks like one of these theorems where he says the one sided Fourier transform of some correlator is some, this time not the mobility but the memory kernel itself on this side. But you can say now look that is not quite, it is not simple enough because this still involves the velocity. It does not involve the noise eta alone. This h is not a stationary noise. That is why you need both arguments here. Okay. But if you use the properties of this correlator which we have derived from this equation, then one can show that this quantity is exactly equal to eta of t naught, eta of t naught plus t. No, it is equal to it, it is equal, yeah, no, no. period. This, this portion is exactly equal to this. So you end up with this relation which says gamma bar of omega equal to 1 over m k Boltzmann t integral 0 to infinity dt e to the i omega t 
eta of t 0, eta of t 0 plus t. This is the second fluctuation theorem. Just for comparison, let us write the first one down. The first one was mu of omega equal to 1 over m, uh, sorry, 1 over k t. Integral 0 to infinity dt to the i omega t, the output process v of t 0, v of t 0 plus t. So, the dynamic mobility which measures the response of the system to an external force in linear response theory is this uh, one sided Fourier transform of this correlator, the output process. On the other hand, this is specific to the Langevin model. This was general in linear response theory because in the Langevin model we explicitly find a model for the velocity and solve the equation of motion, random equation. It says that the correlation of the force, stationary force is not arbitrary, but it must be related to the friction kernel, the memory kernel in this fashion. Okay. This is the equivalent of the fluctuation dissipation theorem, the capital gamma etcetera, because how do you recover that? By saying that this memory kernel is just a delta function. Then this gamma bar, this gamma of t minus t prime is just delta of t minus t prime times a constant gamma, this fellow would become gamma out here. This would be a delta function, but half a delta function because you are integrating 0 to infinity. So, you will get a half here and capital gamma on top and you would get capital gamma as 2 m gamma little k, k Boltzmann t which would give you the original theorem back again, okay. But this is the general version of it. And what is the big lesson it is telling us? It is saying that nice in this generalized model, this eta here is stationary fine, but it cannot be delta correlated because if it is delta correlated, there can be no omega dependence and then this side is omega dependent. So, it is not consistent. So, this is immediately telling you that the moment you introduce a memory kernel, the noise cannot consistently be white noise it is got to be colored noise, there is a correlation time. And what is that correlation time? You define the correlation time by putting omega equal to 0 here, right? And then dividing by the mean square value or whatever it is. So, it gives you a quantity of dimensions time. And that in this case is just the memory kernel. So, little gamma of t Ga little gamma of t v t from 0 to infinity is going to specify for you a correlation time. The correlation in the force uh, try, uh, de somewhat describes the memory in velocity because this is somewhat… Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, it says in this generalized model, you cannot independently, just as in the original model, you cannot independently specify little gamma, the friction constant and the strength of the white noise, you cannot independently do it. In exactly the same way, the more general statement is, you cannot specify the memory kernel and the random forces correlation in independently. They are related in this fashion. It is a consistency check on the model. And when that is satisfied, so you now in model building, you do what you like. You tell me a random force which is stationary. I then say that it is consistent with the Langevin equation with a specific memory kernel, not any old memory kernel. On the other hand, in modeling empirically, if you discover that this friction is modeled by a memory kernel, which is maybe an exponential or some function of time, decreasing function, that fixes for you the correlation of the noise, the manner in which the, this correlation behaves. It fixes for you through these relationships here. And that is what is more generally done. It depends on the model building that you have in mind. 
So, you could say all right this thing here is exponentially correlated with some correlation time tau single exponentially correlated. That is the first thing you do. It is it's a Markov process. We will assume it is Gaussian. We will assume it is stationary and now you say it is not delta correlated but exponentially correlated. Maybe a non steinurian back process maybe. Then it has a correlation which is exponential in time that fixes for you the memory kernel. It fixes gamma bar of omega and from which you can find what sort of gamma of t you should have had in order to have this. So that is an interesting exercise, a simple exercise. Take this to be an exponentially correlated e to the minus t over tau and then figure out what is this guy going to be and therefore what is gamma of t going to be in my memory card. That would be the simplest model in this instance, okay. So this kind of uh, brings us to, to an end to this part of uh, the program. We will, there are some loose ends to be tied up. I will mention them to the extent that I can remember. We will talk about them tomorrow and then go on from there.